stuff and stuff. Some time ago I found this very useful site called Kit, which basically allows you to link all kinds of stuff and create lists with all kinds of stuff. So since I already knew that I eventually wanted to start my website, I just used it as a playground. The cool thing is that you can describe every item on its own and then create kits, which are collections of items combined in one collection. So since I wasn't productive with writing just yet, I thought it I would just embed my now old kits here. So let's take a closer look at all these kits. We actually are going to visit this site right now, which is called Kit, which I already told you. And there we have the first kit, backpacking, all tech. So all the tech I have apart from real hardcore photo and video stuff. The first one is the Aki Quick Charge 3.0 Aki 60W USB charger with 6 point USB charging station. And yeah, it's basically a quick port charger made by Aki. There is a USB-C version of this, but keep in mind most casual USB chargers only support 18 watts. So if you want to charge your laptop, most of the time you should get a dedicated laptop charger. Because sometimes the laptop won't charge at all or won't work, won't charge when using. So the special thing about this is, first of all, it has six, six USB-A ports. And the second thing is that two of those are quick charge, which comes in handy when charging something with 18 watts, because that's the power output they have. The other ones are, I don't know exactly, usually something lower than that. So let's take a look at the second item of backpacking all tech. So, this is a travel adapter. I didn't find an English one, but this is the one I have. I just have a different color. So, it's a travel adapter, AC charger, adapter all in one US, UK, EU, AU, so Australia. And it's a universal adapter, which is pretty neat because, well, you have different sockets all around the world, and if you wanna plug in your stuff, which is probably the, so you have your plug, which is your native plug from your country, and if you go somewhere else where there is another plug, you basically need to switch those or to adapt to these. Then I have a, a cable which enlarges your <laughs> original cable, I don't know the exact word right now. There are never, so this is three meters, you can see it in the video, probably on the podcast not, there are never enough sockets in hostels, airports, buses, train, so, oh, sockets is the word I should have used above, so, there are never enough sockets in hostels, airports, buses, trains, so if you see one which is already occup occupied by someone, you just offer one of the three sockets. It's a win for everyone. The plug is the European one, but with the universal travel adapter, you can just use almost every socket on earth. Why a socket multiplier? A socket multiplier, that's the, that's the name for it. There are, there are chargers for the LPE6 batteries, so the, the ones used in many Canon, many old Canon cameras. For example, the 60D, the 70D, 80D, 90D. Yeah, it goes on like that. That don't require a socket cause they work with USB. Mine is listed, but if you want to charge your laptop or something that doesn't work with type A USB to whatever, then you do need other sockets, plus the story above. Sony MH750 stereo headset with microphone and answer and button for cell phones black. So this is actually something I still got, so I wrote this like um, a time ago, some time ago, and I am using it to record this right now, so they have lasted like almost a few years already at this point, and they are simply very, very good. Then we have a USB-C adapter micro to USB which is also comes in very handy, of course, if you have a USB-C charger, 
or if you have a micro USB charger and you want to use, um, you need USB-C, so you can just put on one of those and then you are good to go. So nowadays everything is switching to USB-C, of course. In the past, everything was micro USB, so there are many items out there who still sell with micro USB and then you have to adapt it. Then there is a power bank. That's not the one I have or had, but I didn't find the one I had. Nowadays I have a different one, maybe I will... So nowadays I have a 10,000 milliampere um, USB-C power bank, so you put USB-C as input in and it outputs also USB-C with 30 watts, which comes in handy because you can charge your notebook with 30 watts, which is a thing that didn't exist a few years ago, but now it does. And so, yeah, this is just a random power bank with quick charge, which was a game changer when I made my first big travel, my first big journey, because quick charge actually allows you to charge your phone all day long and not use like all the time. So you only need 10,000 if you can charge almost every night. Of course, depends on how much you, s you use it. Only for the phone to charge your camera, your notebook maybe. I don't have exactly this one, but mine isn't in retail anymore. If you got a quick charge on your phone or if your phone has another speed charging specification, you should definitely go for a power bank with higher charging speeds like this. So nowadays you also have something different which is called power delivery which works with USB-C and is a universal standard which is of course better. So this was the first kit I made back in the time when I made these kits so after my first travels and we have a few more so we have three left. So the apps. Let's take the apps first. Backpacking apps. So these are the ones I used on my first journey. Flixbus, if you are within Europe. Flixbus is great for everything with Flixbus. Flixbus is a bus company that took over completely the German bus market and is already expanding to the rest of Europe. Basically, it's a very user-friendly franchise company. Tickets can be bought online and via app, and you just show the bus drivers your QR in the app. Almost all buses have sockets, which is really convenient for chain charging everything. You get 150 megabytes of Wi-Fi and every bus has a toilet. The next app is Hostel World. One of the bigger hostel portals that cover that covers most of the hostels. Hostels. I first tried the app Hostel Bookers, Hotel Bookers, but on Hostel World are just much more accommodations enlisted, which makes it by far the better platform for searching for your stay. Then we have Couchsurfing. This is great for getting to know new people. The basic concept of Couchsurfing is you let others stay in your home for free and in return you can stay at other people's homes for free. But for starters you don't even have to offer your home when you start staying with other hosts. So it's not a deal, it's not ideal, not an ideal, it's not a deal for uh, it's so it's not the stay for stay deal, but rather you just choose what you want to choose the couch surfing for. But of course, if no one hosts and everyone wants to wants to get free accommodations, this won't work for now. Triposo. Although it has some ads in it, for me still the best app for replacing your tour guide your tour guide in any city. You can download the, si the guide for each city in advance. Tinder. Of course, you think it's a dating app. It is definitely, but think twice. When traveling, you are the most part in a foreign city and you want to get to know the culture and the people. You can't just talk to people on the streets. Not for everyone. Talk to people in hostels. Sounds great. But if you want to meet just random people of your age, then this app is just great. And you don't have to search only for the other sex. There is the group function where you can go online with your travel partner and search for other groups that want to party, for example. I don't know if they just eliminated the, the group function, so this was the main reason I put it in into this kit. Airbnb. If you want your private apartment everywhere you go, then you can book it with this app or service. You probably already heard about Airbnb. Skyscanner. Use this app for searching for flights, because sometimes if you can organize your trips, 
around the flight, you get a much cheaper one. The basic concept is that when planning, you can choose a range for your date. Let's just say you need a flight to London, but you don't have a date fixed yet. What Skyscanner allows you to do is to now search for the cheapest flight in, let's say, the first week of June, where you plan to visit London. Most of the time, there are certain flights far cheaper than the rest if you are able to plan ahead and have no fixed date. Google Flights. This might also be a very good option for booking flights nowadays, probably even better than Skyscanner. Meetup is an app I used recently in another city to, uh, we wanted to, so we were two and we wanted to find other people and it's actually a very cool app that lets you just find random meetups of people. It's basically for free and some offer of course, so it's not always free. Some offer courses for very much money on there, but essentially it's a app to meet up groups of people, which is very nice. So this was the second of my kids. Then we have backpacking camera tech. All the camera gear I carry with me when I'm traveling only with a backpack. And that seems a lot to me. Disclaimer, I don't have the 70D anymore, so the main camera on here, but I have a Canos, Canon EOS M, M50 nowadays, these days. Canon EOS 70D digital SLR buddy. Although a DSLR is heavy to pack, shooting with something else is just not worth it. So that's the 70D. Then we have the lens, the first one. It's the zoom lens, Canon EFS, 18 to 200 millimeters, f3.5 to 5.6 IS, standard zoom lens for Canon DSLR cameras. We both know that this lens is not the best for every focal length it offers, but at the same time you can't always carry four different primes with you, so primes are fixed lenses, and change them all the time. Your sensor gets dusty, you risk dropping your precious lenses and you have to carry them all, so this is the point where you have to make a decision, in my case, to compromise the picture on picture quality and choose a zoom lens. Then we have the Joby Gorilla Pod SLR Zoom. Flexible tripod for DSLR and mirrorless cameras up to 3kg. Nowadays it's called the Gorilla Pod 3kg or 3. It's actually quite useful. My thought when buying it without the head was, so without the mounting head, that I would get a cheaper one and could mount a Swiss mount on top of it. But the cheaper head couldn't hold the weight of the 70D paired with the 18 to 200 millimeter. So I ended up with using it without any head. But that restricts your range of motion, meaning possible camera position really much. And if you want to change something, you always have to adjust all three of the legs. And it's already not that stable anymore. So I will upgrade to the GorillaPod Focus and use this for smaller cameras or other stuff. HTC Desire I. Okay, it's 2018 when I wrote this. I do now have the Galaxy S10. About the HTC Desire. It's 2018 and this phone came out a few years ago, but the chip is the same as in the HTC One M8 and it's just perfect for selfies. When traveling I have the tradition the tradition to take a selfie with every person I got to know. You have the exact same camera on the front as on the rear and you even have a flash with two different LED color colors on the front. So you can even film yourself with built-in video light. Quite convenient. The screen to body ratio is not the best, but it is waterproof, screen is good, micro SD up to 128 gigabytes, dedicated camera button, which is just dope, and it even supports USB-C OTG on the go. I don't use a camera in between my phone and my DSLR anymore. Either you make the decision to carry the weight of a DSLR or you don't. And when you don't, you always have your small photo and video camera with you in your pocket. Then we have a card reader, a 7-in-1 USB, USB 2.0 OTG, or USB OTGO on the go card reader. 
It's made by CSL. If you don't have a laptop with you, which you usually don't when backpacking, this OTG hub comes in really handy. And when you sometimes visit a city carrying all your stuff with you, a laptop is not always the best option. Depending on the phone you use, you can transfer files at once up to 30 gigabytes. Thing is, you can even charge through the hub, which means if you transfer files overnight, your phone doesn't die. But you can only see either the micro SD or the SD card slot. Can only use, not see. Then we have a Transcend 32 gigabytes SDHC class 10 USH UHS one flash memory card up to 90 megabytes per second write speed. Then we have another SunDisk card, so it is SunDisk, not Transcend. SunDisk Ultra, 128GB micro SD XC USH1 card. UH1. UHS1 card, yeah. I actually have two of this exact card. Small disclaimer, I now have more. And I had a big mysterium going on, cause recording full HD 24 frames per second with the first card seemed to work just fine. It only stopped after the built maximum recording time. The built in maximum recording time of Canon cameras. But the second card just stopped full HD video randomly, out of nowhere. But when, tra when I was traveling and my other cards were full, I had to use the second one and it just stopped all the time. When I wanted to buy another card, I had a very long discussion with a sales guy about the class of the cards and the different writing speeds. It couldn't be. It shouldn't be, he said. So I bought the 64 gigabyte micro SD with the exact same reading and writing speeds and labels. And it worked seamlessly. But I don't know yet what the problem really was. After a few days, I found, I finally found the reason for the lack of performance. I had never formatted the card with the camera. Apparently, I did it with the other card some time ago. And then it worked. My problem was solved. Then we have another 64 gigabyte SunDisk Ultra micro SD XC US H1 card with an adapter. Then we have the Patona, Patona Dual charger for LPX6 um, Canon batteries for Canon 70D, 60D, 80D, 7D, 60D, 5D, Mark II, Mark III, Mark IV. This is just the best. It charges two LP6 at the same time. While you are sleeping, you can charge two batteries and you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night just to change the charging battery. It charges both almost at the same speed as the Canon charger and the big bonus, you only need one free USB-A port, a USB-A to, to micro USB cable, which I have plenty of, because apart from my laptop, everything, almost everything, I own chargers, <laughs> chargers with almost everything chargers with micro USB and you're good to go. You can even charge your batteries without a socket. You just need a power bank and you can charge them in your backpack. That's a roundup. So then I have a replacement battery for the Canon 70D LPE6. So this is a second one for less than half the price. So it's called Baxter Pro Energy. Canon battery LPE6N. It has 240 milliampere hours. For less than half the price of an original Canon LPE6, you get a battery that in terms of shooting time, 90 to 100 percent compared to the original gets you. 90 to 100 percent of the original i have one and it's my main battery because i want to spare my original one when only taking pictures on a city trip lasts all day when shooting video and photo most of the time you will need two to three batteries a day three only if you record let's say three to four hours of video of course also depends on display brightness about buying cheaper ones then this battery didn't work for me. Bought one and that sucked all the time. Maybe 20% of shooting time. I now have different batteries because I have a different camera which don't last that long. Compark Action Cam. This is my replacement basically for a action cam. 
Wie diesmal Action Cam. Compact Action Cam, Compact 4K Sport Camera, Wi-Fi Underwater Camera, Helmet, Camera 170 Degrees Wide Angle with 32 Class 10 Memory Card. I needed a GoPro, but if if I bought one, it would have been 500 bucks. And I never had an action cam before, and because I wasn't sure how much I would use an action cam, I wanted tr to try it out first. Got it for 50 bucks of a special offer on Amazon. It's not the best in the world. The audio isn't really usable, but I guess that's a problem with most of action cams. And the image quality, the image is not quite DSLR-like, but I guess that comes also with in action cam. So I researched the best camera in this price range and bought this one and was surprised as freak. First of all, it comes with the with all the you, you need water housing, lots of mounts, 32 gigabytes micro SD, two batteries and even another housing for mounting it without the water housing. It even comes with a remote control for your wrist. When cruising with a board through a city, you just wear the cam on your forehead and press record or take a picture. Usually you would almost pay 50 bucks alone for all the equipment that comes that it comes with. And the cam itself is also surprisingly good. There are a lot of factors that got me into buying this one. There is a time-lapse mode, good frame rates, but I usually use the full HD mode because the image is cleaner than in 4K. Could write a lot more, but the thing is, if you want to try out an action cam for 50 or 60 bucks, you get everything in one package and a camera that is really good for the price. Okay, I still have this camera this action camera and I still use it occasionally but the thing is that phones these days are just so good that and can record in higher frame rates and also in slow motion so it's just for the cases where you cannot record with a phone really because well your phone is a little bit more expensive Joby GorillaPod 5K kit professional tripod 5K stand and ball head for DSLR cameras or mirrorless cameras with lens up to five kilograms. I now use this one instead of the old one, so the three kilogram variant looks better, better ball head. But the thing is, it's also a little bit heavier. So this is it about the camera backpacking camera tech. And now we have one left, which is the backpacking cases, which is not really complete because I didn't find lots of the stuff I have because it just doesn't exist anymore. So. Backpacking cases. Back to backpacking backpack. So this is a Deuter ACT light 40 liters to plus 10 liters forest moss. So this is one, a bag, a rucksack that is very similar to the one I have. I also have, it's basically this exact same one. I only have the black version of it. Yeah, I have the black version of this. Didn't find it. Bought mine like eight years ago. <laughs> now it's even longer. So and it still it still doesn't have any holes or stuff like that. I used it for almost 15 years at this point, I think. So maybe it's not in retail anymore. But these colors also look really, look really dope. My original plan was to show you all the bags I have, but turns out most of them are nowhere to be found after all. This is the only one that is at least the same model. Then you have Kate Mins, so this is a smaller bag. Kate Mins canvas cow leather DSLR SLR vintage camera shoulder messenger bag army green. This is not the one I have. Mine is from cover pack system and is black, but I didn't find it, so I took this one instead. Looks better than mine. The reason why I think a shoulder bag is a good idea is because for many occasions you just take a camera with you and you sometimes don't want to make everybody think, oh look, he has a camera, which is something you don't want all the time. Example, we went out of the subway in a city so me and my travel partner together and immediately three men very very fast came towards us and asked us random questions and yeah they saw the camera and they they thought mm, maybe so this is about the backpacking cases and this sums up all the kits i previously wrote and um posted to kit so this is it about 
um, backpacking, about stuff and stuff. And that's a wrap. <laughs>